New technologies are allowing for more efficient access. The market will be more democratized. We have definitely seen a lot of that over the past several years. And all this actually can make finance way more efficient than what it used to be. Technology has been transformative in the world of financial markets. When I started in the 1990s, Brokers and traders juggled phones and squawk boxes to send and receive orders, writing out tickets by hand. Now today, all that's done with just a few clicks of a mouse. But financial markets are always evolving. Refinitiv, in partnership with Coalition Greenwich, recently surveyed nearly 250 market professionals across equities, fixed income and foreign exchange to better understand the impact of technological innovation within capital markets. Now whilst the survey was asset class specific, there were many common themes from access to the markets themselves, the changing face of financial companies, and the nature of traders, both professional and retail. I therefore wanted to find out if technology was truly helping markets evolve for the benefit of all, especially retail, or whether technology meant that access to capital markets would be limited to just those who have sufficient capital to develop the technology. Many capital markets have fragmented into multiple exchanges and geographical locations. But does this mean that markets are becoming less efficient? Kate Finlayson, head of FIC market structure at JP Morgan, outlined how technology is allowing participants to access different venues for different styles of trading, whilst maintaining market efficiency and price discovery. Well, markets absolutely have evolved over the years, and for certain asset classes, how market participants access liquidity has changed. Take SpotFX as a prime example. The number of electronic communication networks has vastly increased, so you have this highly fragmented platform landscape, which shapes how many venues can be accessed for algorithmic execution and the variety of execution protocols available across the different platforms offers choice in terms of execution to suit a particular trading strategy. Even in the more traditionally concentrated markets like fixed income, fintech providers, new platforms, new protocols have emerged, offering an element of competition, which of course fosters healthy markets. So new technologies are allowing market participants to more efficiently access liquidity, uh, to be able to aggregate pre-trade information in order to consume that information in better informed execution decisions, and on a post-trade basis, be able to allow for enhanced assessment of execution channels and partners. New technologies, trading protocols have evolved from the increase in portfolio trading in recent years, the create redeem process associated with ETFs and algorithmic pricing of bonds. How this all comes together helps price discovery and can enhance liquidity. All this new technology obviously doesn't come for free, right? So while it might offer efficiencies and can enhance operational workflows, the cost of execution are undeniably on the rise. From the investment in trading technologies to the costs associated with execution across multiple platforms and the costs associated with market data, it all adds up. And as the regulatory regard for the trading venue perimeter increases, to the extent we have some unintended consequences there for startups entering the market, given the costs associated with being a regulated trading venue, we may see some new entrants think about their next move. Do they get acquired? Do they partner with another venue? Or do they take a think about their new idea and whether it's worth the investment required? And hopefully this doesn't hinder innovation. I think for certain markets like cash equities, retail participation may be helped by the provision of consolidated tape. It may help to further diversify the investor base to include retail investors and help to develop more of a capital markets culture in Europe. I think perhaps for other asset classes like OTC derivatives, where we see professional and sophisticated investors access these markets to execute a particular trading strategy or for hedging purposes, these participants may be better positioned to take part, and so we may see less of an uptick there. 
Certain markets like cash equities may become more democratized. Market participants have raised concerns about the diminishing liquidity in European cash equity markets. Uh, and this is in contrast to the US, where the retail culture is vastly different. There is a recognition that a bit more dynamism could be added to European capital markets. And you see evidence of this in the changes proposed to the UK listing rules. I think if we look at things more broadly in terms of access, New technologies are allowing for more efficient access to markets. They're allowing for the aggregation of pre- and post-trade data to make assessments post-trade on how, how that particular execution channel may have worked, but also to be in control of one's own data, to look at those different channels and to make an assessment where it is best to trade and through which trading protocol to suit a particular trade scenario. But relationships still matter even in the more electronic markets. And certain markets where there are perhaps less liquidity providers available or it's more specialized, we may see less democratization there as it's perhaps more appropriate for the professional and, and sophisticated investors to, to access those. Some markets are becoming more specialized through technology, catering for professional requirements that have little interest for retail investors. But innovation is helping individuals gain cheaper and faster access to their preferred markets, whilst helping financial companies provide customer products at an increasingly lower cost. Technology requires investment, and this could create barriers for new players entering the market. But innovation is often at its most powerful in small, nimble companies. As a result, the companies that are participating in markets on behalf of customers are in a constant evolution of innovation and acquisition, as we'll hear now from Norman Chia, Head of Electronic Workflows at LSEG. Basically, if you look at providers who are able to provide solutions across the pre-trade, at-trade and post-trade would benefit from this, which is why you know, the LSEG actually has bought Refinity to increase its capabilities. And I think all this points down to, if you look at uh, niche players, right, they are faster at basically developing new technology but beyond a certain uh, point of time, they actually need uh, to partner with large organizations in order to scale and large organizations in order to provide technology to their clients. It's very difficult to develop if you're such a big organization and sometimes by you know, partnering, acquiring, you actually uh, acquire capabilities to actually service your clients across the different geographies, asset class and provide the most value to our clients. In the highly liquid space where you have a lot of high frequency trading, you actually require a lot of investment to be of a certain scale, right? Because you are getting uh, faster, uh, much more uh, good at execution. But if you look at the less liquid uh, instrument, that's where the scale providers like an LSEC group comes in, where we offer variety of tools and execution capabilities, right? So it can, it's all about really, you know, how do we look at the market and we provide tools and services to ensure that our traders, the clients, service their clients better, to make them much more efficient and giving them much more better tools to do their job. So I think the key driver to any trading or broker decision has always been liquidity, right? How to trade and where to trade. So I, be, I think if you look at very highly liquid instruments, then technology has been very good towards uh, execution, use of algo, much more analytics and data analysis. But if you look at the more less liquid instrument where the innovation has been kind of slow and then brokers have to adapt because the clients are still on, you know, things like uh, messaging, uh, basically phone uh, and, you know, uh, some of the uh, tools to help them discover liquidity. So I think really what happens in the more or less liquid, we are looking at more, you know, uh, utilizing fixed network, giving traders tools and abilities to actually service their clients better. So I think we have to really look at it from two different points of view and to service the asset class based on their evolution. I think there's always a common fear, but it's not always really about demand versus machine argument, because what we have to realize is that the new generation of traders coming in, they're also changing as well. So we look a lot at what we call the fin coders, right? Where in the past, you know, coding might be a pastime, but increasingly it's becoming a standard module for many students coming as well as traders. So it's really about how do we give tools, better analysis to traders so that they can actually uh, be more effective at their work. It's all about increasing productivity and basically giving them the tools for them to do their job. And in certain cases, it might be, you know, giving them uh, Python uh, capabilities so that they are able to script 
better analytics to do their jobs. Ultimately, what we are trying to do is to increase productivity, right? We are uh, trying to increase the uh, better way to source liquidity. So I believe all this in the future would definitely help in terms of the whole financial industry because the goal is the same, right? Is to basically, how do we help the clients discover liquidity better? How do we trade much more effectively? And how do we increase the overall productivity of the trading desk? Probably in the past, the trust is, all, is what drives a lot of the technology decision, but we have new technologies coming in like, uh, digitalization of assets, right? And all this actually can make finance way more efficient than what it used to be. Because a lot of functions exist because of a lack of trust. But if we know what's there, we know that there's a trust, then I believe the whole uh, financial technology will be much more exciting and much more efficient to increase the whole productivity and efficiency for the whole system in the market. Companies, like markets, are always evolving. Whilst it's tempting to think that technology will fundamentally alter the roles of humans within the trading function, it's also clear that technology is augmenting rather than replacing humans. Companies are connecting to markets in different ways, but the importance of human intervention remains central to that function. This combination of technology and people ultimately is helping to increase the efficiency of market access for the benefit of all market participants. Will traders be replaced by machines? And will access for individual retail traders improve with advances in technology? Within financial companies, the skill set has dramatically changed, with coding expertise a major requirement for many trading desks. And as we'll now hear from Kevin McPartland, Head of Market Structure and Technology Research at Coalition Greenwich, these developments are also helping individual and retail traders gain greater opportunity to trade on their own behalf. The biggest change that we've seen over the last 10 years, even over the last few years, uh, is an understanding of technology, right? If we think back 20, 25 years ago, it really was all about understanding the market and being able to talk to clients. And today, right, there's a huge technology component to everything that all traders do, both on the buy side and the sell side. Uh, and not just being able to click the mouse um, or to use chat to talk with counterparties, but really understanding data, data science. There's some folks that are even sort of programming on the desk, right? So it's a much deeper knowledge, right? It used to be trading desks were full of just effectively business school graduates or folks that were experts in economics, or really even just those that understood how the markets worked and as I said, could talk to clients. But today it's, it's much deeper than that. It's a much more well-rounded person who can understand the markets and work with clients, but also really understand how to apply the technology and the data um, to make better decisions. Technology has certainly changed the makeup of not just the trading desk, but the financial markets and the firms within it as a whole. But as we've sort of gone forward over time, we see that really technology is augmenting the human relationship, right? This is still very much so a trust business. In the past, it was simply about trusting your salesperson or trusting your portfolio manager. Today, it might be about trusting the developer of that algorithm that you're using or trusting the person who created the model that looks at the data that helps you make your decisions. But it's still very much a trust business. And you need someone sort of at the wheel, right? Even if there's systems or algorithms or automation going on, there needs to be folks that control that, keep an eye on that, improve those processes. And they're not always sitting in the front office on the trading desk, right? They could be sitting quite literally anywhere in the world helping to improve those processes. History would tell us that more automation is inevitable, um, but the whole market will not be automated, right? Every time that sort of the technology community figures out how to automate a process, how to make a process more efficient, that frees up uh, people, resources, expertise to focus on a new opportunity, a new market, a new product uh, that will then need all of that human interaction. Then five, 10, 20 years down the road, that new product, there will be methods of automating parts of that process. But innovation will continue, right? If we think back to uh, the 1990s when U.S. equity markets were starting to see more electronic trading. Automation at that point was the ability to electronically send orders uh, down to the floor of the exchange rather than somebody needing to run a ticket over or to pick up the phone, right? That was automation then. Um, you can see how far we've come in 25 years 
uh, right now where we have algorithms that are sending orders all over the world across many exchanges. So it's, it's gone leaps and bounds from where we started. Um, but that means that we have more developers, we have smarter algorithms, you can trade across multi-asset classes much more efficiently than you could then. So there will always be something else that is new and more complex that needs people that over time will be automated leading the way to the next innovation. The benefit in the end is for the retail investor. For the most part, we have institutional investing because there is retail demand. The majority of the trillions of dollars that are managed by large asset managers ultimately are funds that can then be invested in by retail investors in retirement accounts. Um, so there, there absolutely is a benefit. And in so many ways, right, the quality of the investment products retail investors have access to today is just incredible, the diversity of those products. You can invest in almost anything. And the fees you're paying for access to those products, again, especially on a sort of by historic standards, is really approaching almost nothing. In fact, there are some funds where the fees to invest um, are zero, which is absolutely incredible if we look back, not even, you know, not even 20 years, but even five or 10 years, it's just amazing. And then the thought of how easy it is to trade for your own account whether it be options or equities or bonds or futures. Again, often free or near free. Um, you can do it on your phone. And this does all feel very normal now, but it was not very long ago that the only way to place a trade was to pick up the phone and call your broker. The market will be more democratized. We have definitely seen a lot of that over the past several years. That said, ultimately, the economies of scale that we see in today's markets um, both from a capital markets firm perspective, but also from a fintech firm perspective, can't be denied. And uh, over the last 20 years, there's definitely been ebbs and flows where we've had huge numbers of startups come onto the scene and really change things and push the envelope. Um, and then over time, many of those um, get acquired, they merge with each other, we always lose a good amount. But in the end, we're left with a better system than we had before, although back to a sort of a relatively small few firms that are driving most of the market. And that cycle has continued over and over again, and that's what's gotten us to where we are today. Technology is complementary to the human skill set. Individual traders now have significantly more market access than they've had in the past. They're able to analyze more data. The nature of the trader may have changed, but the importance of the individual trader has not. And innovation has also enhanced market access for individual retail traders, helping to democratize the market by lowering the barriers to entry for a much wider group of potential participants. So I wanted to find out if innovation was democratizing the capital markets, helping individuals and not just corporate behemoths with improved levels of access. The changes over the last few years have been quite remarkable, and that innovation continues today. And rather than replacing people, innovation is improving the ability of individuals to interact with the capital markets. And one of the key elements here was trust. This is a relationship business, and trust therefore remains a key element. And that's trust in markets, trust in your colleagues, or trust in the technology that gives you access. Innovation is helping to build the trust that breeds the confidence that people need to feel comfortable engaging with markets. And ultimately, that will be a force that helps democratize the marketplace for all users.